I want to thank you all for being here this morning. I want to thank in particular Councilwoman Helen Fulton for being here, Sharon Pinder, my director for the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business Development. I want to thank our sponsors for Supplier Diversity and Inclusion Week. We all know, everybody in here knows, you can have a plan, but if you don't have the sponsors, it just sits on a paper. So I want to thank our sponsors. Special thank you to our title sponsor, uh, Caesars Entertainment and Horseshoe Baltimore Casino. I want to thank Chad Barnhill, who's been a great partner. Every day you look, it's more and more of the casino. It's like it must be 24 hours a day you're working on it, but I'm, I am uh, anxiously awaiting, eagerly awaiting uh, the new casino and all it means for uh, jobs in Baltimore City. I also want to thank our presenting sponsors, Southwest Airlines and Graybone Media. I want to thank our gold sponsor for our uh, week, University of Maryland University College. I want to thank the Baltimore, the, our signature media sponsors, Baltimore Business Journal and the Daily Record, and our other sponsors and partners, State Farm, BGE, Whiting Turner, Chesapeake Employers Insur Insurance, uh, MeQ, DBED, Wells Fargo, and BD Development. I want to thank all of them uh, for making this possible. One of my top priorities is to ensure that all businesses have an opportunity to compete and succeed. My goal of growing our city by 10,000 families cannot happen without the growth of small businesses to create economic opportunity and jobs. We all know that small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Uh, small minority and women-owned businesses continue to be faced with challenges, including disparity in access to capital and deal flow, availability of information, and the intricacies of city procurement processes. Minority and women-owned businesses are a great value to the city of Baltimore, and I'm committed to inclusion for M uh, WBE firms. Our goal, my goal, is to make Baltimore an entrepreneurial mecca. We want to attract businesses from outside of Baltimore, and we want to focus on retaining and growing businesses that are already located here. In keeping with our vision of creating a business-friendly environment in Baltimore, I am designating October 28th through November 1st, 2013, as the first annual Supplier Diversity and Inclusion Week in Baltimore. Activities during the week will include, uh, provide, will uh, provide a forum to recognize small minority and women owned businesses. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to be holding meaningful discussions about the state of minority and women owned businesses. And we're going to take a look into the future and discuss the impact of the new majority. We'll be holding a thank you tour of a few of the of Baltimore's minority and women owned businesses and an open house tour of City Hall for MWBEs, including coaching and mentoring sessions with students from the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship at Coppin State University and Morgan State University. This week we'll also hold a New Majority Summit to discuss the state of minority and women owned businesses and the impact on the New Majority. One of the anchors of Supplier Diversity and Inclusion Week will be the top MBE awards. And I want to congratulate these innovative businesses. Each of the top, one, uh, top 100 MBE serves in one way or another as a model for success. Thank you for helping to drive entrepreneurial success throughout the region. The top MBE program is a region-wide effort. One of the year's honorees, uh, of this year's honorees, excuse me, 60% are from Maryland and 40% of the honorees are from neighboring states. This is the first time that this event will be held in Baltimore City and I want to welcome minority and women owned businesses from Maryland, uh, DC, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Delaware to the city of Baltimore. All of these activities are being driven by my staff in the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business Development. And I want to thank you for your hard work. I have a fantastic team who uh, set out uh, to help me achieve my goal of making Baltimore the place, if, if you are a small business, if you are a minority-owned business or a women-owned business, that you want to do business in Baltimore. I'm very, very um, pleased and proud of the work of Sharon um, Pender and um, all of the, the team that we have here. Um, she has a, we had a, a model of inclusion and if you take a look around this room, um, I think that model in, in your, uh, your hard work, the testament to your hard work is a collection of people that we have here today. And I do want to present you, Sharon, with this proclamation designating October 28th through November 1st as 
the inaugural Supplier Diversity and Inclusion Week in Baltimore. My gift to all of you is I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> it's going to be here, but I do want to present it to you and thank say you. thank you to your team and to each and every one of you uh, for being a model of excellence in the city. So we're serious about inclusion and understand the, the business side of diversity. Our goal is to aggressively grow the capacity of our businesses and to see more mainstream businesses across the Baltimore region. We've met some key milestones on our, our roadmap for inclusion. Last year, I created the Mayor's Advisory Council for Minority and Women-Owned Businesses to develop bold recommendations to address the fundamental impediments in the city's MWBE program. In April of this year, the Advisory Council released a new day a better way. Recommendations for reforming our MWBE program and creating a more effective model for the future. Just last month, we announced Baltimore has been awarded $900,000 from the Minority Business Development Agency to operate M MBDA, a business center in Baltimore. The center will serve minority businesses all over the country, broadening their access to resources on both a national and a global level. Uh, this Baltimore, we competed uh, nationwide for this designation and for this, this award, and um, Baltimore is the only city, uh, the only jurisdiction that not only got the award, but Baltimore City, um, the, the, our city is responsible for operating uh, the office as well. So to me, that is a testament to the excellence of my, uh, of my team, and I want to thank them for that. So today, I would like to announce one more milestone, key milestone for Baltimore. To continue the work of, my, of the Mayor's Advisory Council on Minority and Women-Owned Business Enterprises, I have formed the Mayor's Coalition of Supplier Diversity and Inclusion. The coalition will advise the city on matters related to the inclusion and diversity and ask us the, the tough questions that need to be addressed. And I said this to uh, some of the members who were part of the coalition uh, when we formed. I said, you know, this is, this is in your hands. I want us to be the best, and I want you to, to ask us the tough, tough questions and talk about the uh, tough things that we need to discuss in order to be the best. Otherwise, we leave an opportunity on the table. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased uh, that they will serve as champions for business and assist the oversight and implementation of the recommendations made by the Advisory Council. I said when we created that plan, it was not a plan. It was pretty. I liked mm -hmm. it. But it was not just for us to look at. It was for us to use a roadmap for the future. And this coalition, which has already begun its work, is going to make sure that it is a living, working document that leads us to the future of business in Baltimore. The coalition is chaired by Robert Wallace, the CEO of Bith Group Technologies, and co-chaired by Sedalia uh, Louis-Akbar, uh, president of M. Louis Construction, who we will hear from shortly. Also included in the coalition are uh, Louis Barunda, uh, Luis Barunda, excuse me, President and CEO of U.S. Hispanic Youth Entrepreneur Education, uh, Bob De, uh, DeShiel of Harris Jones Malone, Anwar Hassan of Lewis a Burger Company, Councilwoman Helen Holton representing the Baltimore City Council, Kevin Johnson of Commercial Group, Franklin Lee Esquire of uh, Tidings and Rosenberg, Sheena Parker. Uh, founder and CEO of Integrity Title, Jeanette Gloss Partlow, Gloss Partlow, or Gloss, I'm sorry if I messed you up, I'm very sorry, uh, President of Chem the Maryland Chemical Company, uh, Anthony Robinson, uh, Shalonda Stokes, who is with us today, one of our uh, great sponsors of this event, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Richard Sutton, uh, Josie Thompson, Stanley Tucker, and Mimi Roder Vaughn, who is with us today as well. Uh, again, this is an exciting time for Baltimore. We are on the cusp of great things when it comes to minority and women-owned business, and I'm so proud that so many of you are along uh, with me on this journey. I would, thank you. I would now like to turn it over to our, our presenting spart sponsor, Chad Barnhill, Ma uh, General Manager of Horseshoe Casino. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today and to lend our support to this very important initiative. Uh, those, is a, a, those of us overseeing the development of Horseshoe Casino Baltimore can attest to the wealth of qualified MBEs doing business in this great city. We're proud to be working with many such firms on our $442 million project, and we're thrilled with the results that we're seeing as a world-class casino continues to take shape 
on Russell Street just south of M&T Bank Stadium. For a project of the size and scope of Horseshoe Baltimore, it's essential that we have access to a broad range of specialists who can deliver on time, on budget, and the highest quality product. As we continue with the construction of what will serve as the city's new Southern Gateway, many MBE companies are playing an integral role in expanding Baltimore's tourism district, its tax base, and its overall appeal to the downtown area. Our great partners are helping to build us an exceptional attraction that will create 1,700 jobs and help transform the new Russell Street Corridor. When we unveil the completed Horseshoe Baltimore in the third quarter of next year, people from around the region will see firsthand what I already know, namely that this city can produce world-class projects with homegrown talent. My colleagues and I are looking forward to sharing our grand opening celebration with all of our MB partners who continue to be instrumental in making our project a reality. Thank you. Madam Mayor, at this time, um, to answer the, kind of the call that you were talking about with the Mayor's Coalition of Supply, Diversity, and Inclusion, is the co-chair, Sedalia Luis Akbar of M. Luis Construction. Good morning. Madam Mayor and esteemed guests, it is a pleasure to be here with you this cool Monday morning to kick off the first Supplier Diversity and Inclusion Week in the City of Baltimore. With the Mayor's Advisory Council on Minority and Women-Owned Business Enterprises Program, we were tasked with the creation of the strategy of business development and transformation of the minority and women business programs in the City of Baltimore. We were very inclusive and thorough in the recommendations that we made, but with this thoroughness comes a more complex challenge, that of implementation of the recommendations we suggested. The second phase is precisely that, ensuring that some of the folks that were initially on the Advisory Council continue on this coalition on the diversity and inclusion, as well as include new members of the community to ensure a smooth transition from a strategy and recommendation perspective to one of action and implementation. Moving forward, this will not be easy because some of the recommendations require a culture shift, a business shift, a political shift, and a technology shift. We understand that reality. Our aim is to proceed with transparency and diligence as we help the mayor with implementing this. M. Lewis Construction is a city MBE, WBE, and the former top 100 MBE. As such, Natalia and I are grateful that Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake is committed and steadfast in her mission to ensure that minority and women-owned businesses are included and represented in the process and are afforded the same business opportunities for development and growth in our great city. This does not occur by happenstance, but by her vision, dedication, and strategy to ensure the success of all of the business diversity of the city of Baltimore. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, um, we have just a sampling of the top 100 minority business winners that are um, here this afternoon, but I also want to acknowledge the um, presence of Robert Ludwig from UMUC, as well as Linda Foy from BGE, and again, we're thankful for the sponsors, and I'm sorry, Chris Duncan from State Farm, and we're thankful for the sponsors that are here. And just to kind of reiterate, we are in for a treat this week in terms of the first annual um, Supplier Diversity and Inclusion Week in Baltimore as proclaimed by Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake. Um, tomorrow, the thank you tour, we've selected businesses that are second generation businesses um, in the city of Baltimore. They've been here for decades um, and that's gonna be a real treat to go visit them um, and have the mayor thank them personally. On Wednesday, of course, is the, um, the, the focus um, of the big event of Top 100 taking place and War Memorial Hall, um, where we gather to celebrate and honor those winners. And on Thursday, we have here in cur the current room upstairs, uh, we will have um, a conversation, as the mayor talked about, in terms of the state of minority and women-owned businesses and the new majority in the current room. And it's featuring speaker, economist, Anaban Basu. And on Friday, because we think City Hall is such a wonderful place to, to be, we're asking 
women and minority businesses to come take a tour. There's a lot of historic value here, as well as we're nurturing the next generation of entrepreneurs. And so we have a pack-filled week. I'd like to personally thank the team at the Mayor's Office of Minority Women on Business Development and Christine Bivens and Myra Blanchard, and thank you all. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Again, in, in closing, I want to thank everyone for being here. Again, thank you to our sponsors. I'm excited about this this week. I hope everyone's excited. I think we're going to have time for a few questions, one, two, or three questions. Anybody? Anybody? So we gave you all the information. We're going to keep this up. When I say questions, you'll just say no questions. <laughs> all right, thanks, everyone, for being here. Thank you.